Well, it's a beautiful July night here in Denver, capping off the extended holiday weekends. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jeremy Hohola. While things are looking calm here in the metro area, several counties to the east and southeast are still under a severe thunderstorm morning. Let's get right to meteorologist Chris Spears for the latest. Chris, yeah, pretty active night, Jeremy, down on the southeastern plains of Colorado. A few of those severe thunderstorm warnings did expire at the top of the hour, but we still have some counties under a watch until 11 o'clock, and we could still see a few of these storms uh, reach severe limits. It's really the Arkansas River Valley from Pueblo to Trinidad on I-25. That is a really rough drive tonight. Lots of thunder shower and thunderstorm activity stretching east over into the La Junta and uh, Lamar region, several hundred cloud to ground lightning strikes. Earlier tonight, we even had a, a storm chaser report a brief funnel that did touch down uh, just south of the Burlington area. Northeastern Colorado, it's quiet. It's a beautiful night outside. If you're comfortable raising that window as you sleep, it is just delightful. 50s and 60s in July on the eastern plains for uh, current temps. It's warmer out west. That's some of the air headed our way. So storms end sunny and mild tomorrow. Hot week ahead. I'll tell you what could happen in Denver coming up this weekend. That's only happened 15 other times in history in the full forecast. All righty. This June was Denver's second hottest on record and with temperatures expected to climb this coming week, law enforcement and health experts are warning against leaving kids and pets in hot cars. Police here in the metro area have already had to handle some of these rescue cases. Nine News reporter Rachel Krause has more on what you need to know. Can you get a temperature on the dog? 100. If you get right here. Oh, 100. That's yeah, what we're busting. With temperatures spiking, it's causing concern for Wheat Ridge police after not one but two dogs were left alone in overheated spaces. Come here, buddy. Police Come came here, in buddy. to save this pit bull who'd been left alone in a scorching trailer. After we were able to get into the trailer, didn't see any water. There's no air conditioning running in that. Alex Rose with Wheat Ridge Police says they're expecting to charge the dog's owner with inhumane treatment and animal cruelty. The dog, thankfully, is doing okay. Hi, puppers. What are we doing in here? Just one week later, officers were called out to another hot car. 105 on the body. Passersby yeah. called for help after the owner left their shih tzu behind while they shopped. It's too hot for him to be in here. You know how he's in distress. He's dehydrated. He's oh, panting. That owner given a stern talking to and a written warning from officers. Even just a couple of minutes left alone in a car, whether it's a dog or a kid, that could be potentially deadly or cause several other health concerns. Yeah, absolutely. Cars heat up really quickly. They can heat up as many as 20 degrees in just 10 minutes and will continue to heat up after that. So even on a 70 or 80 degree day, it can become dangerous really quickly. Brittany Lombard with Children's Hospital Colorado says a child's body temperature can rise five times faster than an adult's. Things that might feel comfortable or just a little bit uncomfortable for us could be really dangerous for children. About 40 kids each year will die from heat stroke after being left in a hot car. The latest, an eight year old girl in North Carolina who died after being left in a hot car by her mom. These cases are especially painful. In over half of these cases, a child is unintentionally left in a car, meaning the caregiver maybe got distracted or um, got involved with a different project and forgot the child was in their car at that time. Thankfully, CDOT says no kids in Colorado have died from a heat stroke in a car in the past decade, but with hot temperatures in store for July, Lombard says parents need to stay vigilant. So it really is important to be consistent and check the backseat every single time. While a Colorado law provides immunity for people who enter a locked vehicle to help an at-risk person or an animal from situations like hot cars, law enforcement says if you see a pet or a person in danger or overheated, call them immediately for help. Rachel Krause, 9 News. So you touched upon this in your report where parents are not doing this on purpose and it's hard to imagine getting so distracted that you would leave your child in your car, but it happens to a lot of parents. What can you recommend to them? Yeah, and Jeremy, they say it's a lot when parents tend to change their routine up that these kinds of accidents tend to happen. Now, our expert did tell us that you want to make sure that you leave your cell phone in the back seat with your child, especially if they're a rear-facing infant. That way, when you get out of the car, the first thing you're going to look for is your phone, and you're immediately going to check on your child. All right, Rachel Krause, thank you for that advice. 
Illegal fireworks caused an overnight fire that burned three acres in the Willow Springs open space. That's in Centennial near East Arapahoe Road and South Holly Street. South Metro Fire says this happened over around midnight. Firefighters say they found mortar style fireworks outside of the open space and a trash can filled with illegal fireworks. The fire was contained after about 20 minutes and crews finished mopping up hot spots just before two o'clock in the morning. And firefighters are making some good progress on the Oak Ridge fire burning in Pueblo County today. It's 59% contained. Compare that to 50% yesterday. It did burn 47 more acres in the past day. That's up to 1,250 acres now. There are nearly 700 firefighters working on this firefight. The fire started just over two weeks ago, and investigators say lightning is to blame. A restaurant in Golden is all clear tonight after employees were exposed to chemicals from a fire outside the restaurant. It happened last night at the Golden Mill restaurant on Forge Street. Golden Fire says an electric one-wheel scooter caught on fire near the patio of the restaurant. The restaurant was then evacuated while employees put out the fire using a dry chemical fire extinguisher. But four employees were exposed to the chemicals in that extinguisher in the process. They were treated on scene, then hazmat crews cleaned up and determined it was safe to reopen the patio today. For a parent who has lost a child, birthdays can be painful. For six years now, the Bigelow family has made July 8th a day of positive change. They do it for Vaughn Jr., known as Bubba. He was killed in a road rage incident in Westminster. Megan Bigelow talked with Kim Christensen about that day and the days since then. I remember thinking, just lay here and pretend you're dead and he won't shoot you again. Lay here. Don't move. Don't move. I remember bits and pieces in the ICU, few and far between, and then I really didn't wake up until like a week later. Moms are keepers. They keep plants. I was doing something that moms do all the time. I was taking my kids to the dentist's office. That's all I was doing. They keep memories, all of them, sadly. I remember trying to count how many gunshots or went off and lost track and passed out. Mom, mom, mom. I remember thinking, I can't lie to him. I can't say I'm okay. Megan Bigelow keeps her boys close. I'll say, well, I have three. I have a son who's, you know, a senior, son in seventh grade, and a son that's forever 13. And that's, I mean, it's that's the truth of it. I mean, he, that's, Bubba will be forever 13. He'll be two weeks shy of his 14th birthday. They've counted six summers without Bubba. Six years since Megan and Asa nearly died. Unfortunately, they looked at me and they thought if I was not already dead, I would be dead soon. Even the first police officer on scene didn't think I was gonna make it, which is pretty surreal to hear. Asa would have a surgery, I would have a surgery. 30 plus surgeries for Asa, dozens of surgeries for Megan. She's still here for them. What were my options? My options were either lay in bed, under the covers, hide, or know that I had Cooper, Asa, Vaughn, that still needed me. Like, I was still part of a family. New memories have joined the old ones. It's crazy to see Cooper get his license and go to high school and go to prom, homecomings, all those things. Things that Bubba's never done. Her middle son is now her oldest. 
mature enough to tell a jury the horrible details he still carried with him. There's certain things I did not know that he saw or knew or did until he testified. And I think it was kind of heal like cleansing for him. Healing is probably not the right word, but cleansing. Like he felt like he had the ability to help. Turns out families are keepers too. You think about, oh, I remember that time or, or what we were doing surrounding that picture. I remember how much he smiled or loved or, you know, laughed. They keep doing things for Bubba. It is, it's what can we do? What's like, how can we make the world better and how can we remember Bubba? The Big Waves Foundation, a free gun lock program, and now a documentary. Our story is called Treading Still. So it's the story and the story of Bubba. A boy, a son, stuck in a moment now years in the past. It is that story that remains worthy of telling. A story told by a mother who still keeps him close, like all mothers hope to do. Tomorrow night, friends and family will watch the first viewing of the documentary, Treading Still, together.